Gallup poll conducted in March found that 58% of Americans say they worry a great deal about climate change. The poll also shows 41% of the respondents believe the news about global warming is generally exaggerated. But 62% think there is consensus among scientists that climate change is real and already occurring. Currently, 57% of Americans reject the notion that increases in the Earth's average temperatures are a result of natural cyclical changes in the environment and instead attribute climate change to human activities. That's up from just three years ago. So is the debate about climate change really over? Joining me now to offer their takes on all of this, Dr. Marlo Lewis, a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute Center for Energy and Environment. And joining us from Hartford, Connecticut, Dr. Michael Dorsey, an environmental studies fellow and visiting professor at Wesleyan University. Dr. Lewis and Dr. Dorsey, thank you both for coming on the broadcast. Marlo, let me start with you because I'm sure you'll be able to jump in on this and give me your thoughts. Um, it seems like if you want conflicting information, that's one thing you can definitely get on this. And I'm just going to read you a little brief headline from each of these articles. Number one, climate change skeptics are doing a bit of gloating following a series of mainstream media reports that acknowledge what those skeptics have long held. The Earth is not warming, warming rather, at least not in the last 10 years. This one, U.S. emissions in Pennsylvania are causing floods in other areas. The victims can do nothing to protect themselves. <laughs> I could be looking at this or this. Right. What's the deal? Well, this is one of the most politicized issues that that I've ever seen in, in my entire lifetime. So you're naturally going to get information presented by all sides and without stop, uh, without, without any let up. And in fact, it's only escalated this, this conversation or shouting match, if you want to describe it more accurately, has only escalated over the last several years. Michael, let me get you to jump in here, because it, it, it is true, if I'm reading the newspaper, I could read this one article and say, uh, scratch my head, and I can read another one. Um, is the news media just not doing a very good job of reporting on this? What's going on? Well, Mike, I think there's several things that are going on. First, we have, we know that Republicans, and particularly people on the right, who often at times are stereotyped as not believing in climate change by the media, they actually think that climate change is going on, not in a Gallup poll, but in a new poll from Yale University. Uh, more than half of those that vote Republican or Republican-leaning independents recognize and believe that climate change is going on. And almost two-thirds want measures to be taken to stop and avoid catastrophic climate change. If you want to jump right in, Marlo, go right ahead. The, the end of the world interpretation of global warming that we've seen from the mainstream environmental movement and some of the more uh, celebrated figures within it, like Al Gore, Vice President Al Gore, and James Hansen, I think that's highly exaggerated. And, and I, I would just throw out a few data points, if you will. Uh, if you look at uh, deaths, aggregate deaths globally, and death rates related to extreme weather, we've actually seen a 93% decrease in overall deaths and a 98% in decrease in the death rate since the 1920s. That's despite global population increasing three times over. So you'd expect that if climate change was affecting extreme weather in a way that hurt people, a, a much larger global population would have more deaths. Instead, we see a 93% well, decrease in Marla, deaths. Let's, to let's me, hold this it, shows that it's not let's hold the major it problem well, let's, it's cracked up to let, be. Let's get Michael to jump in here and give us his thoughts. Well, I'd have to refute the issue of deaths related to catastrophic weather events. Uh, we can go back uh, to the recent UN study that was led by former Secretary General Kofi Annan that makes basically the opposite claims that we've seen increasing uh, mortality and deaths from catastrophic weather events associated with unfolding climate change. Uh, we can parse these issues in various ways. We can look at nuanced uh, you know, particular facts and, and, and pull out and split hairs on individual uh, matters in very ways that play to either side of the political conversation, left or right. But the reality is, is that the climate is changing. It's changing in catastrophic ways. That sometimes means that it'll be warmer. It also can mean that it'll be more cold. We may see more intense winter storms. Uh, the fact is, is that as the climate changes in unprecedented ways, driven by humanity's 
input of CO2 and atmospheric gases into the system that drive this problem in the first place, that we see catastrophic problems that we wouldn't otherwise relate to normal climate activity. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Marlo. Uh, you, yes. you say you're a lukewarmer. Do you think that the government should be intervening? Should there be legislation? Uh, because you say it does yeah. exist. No, and in fact, what we've seen in the last decade is a dramatic drop in U.S. carbon dioxide emissions driven completely by the marketplace, by hydraulic fracturing, which a great segment of the environmental movement opposes. But because of that, we've seen a, a, sh uh, a switch from coal, which is the most carbon intensive uh, fossil fuel to natural gas, so that U.S. Em carbon dioxide emissions today are back to 1994 levels without, without any regulation. But I just, I, I do not accept uh, Mike's, Michael's characterization of the consensus to which I supposedly belong. I do not see catastrophic consequences of global warming. I see weather disasters like Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy was only a category one hurricane before it made landfall. Over the past seven years, there hasn't been a single category three to five hurricane making landfall in the United States. Now that is the longest period without a major hurricane landfall strike in the United States since 1900, since measurements, since measurement of this data began. Now, is that because of global warming? Is that in spite of global warming? Or does it have nothing to do with global warming? Hurricane Sandy cannot be attributed to global warming. I don't know of a single meteorologist who would make that claim. Okay, Michael, I want to give you a chance to respond to that. And also the, the question about legislation and governments intervening. Well, l let's fo first focus on, on catastrophic weather events. The, the fact is we live on a planet, and I'm sure Marlowe will recognize that. Uh, and the fact is that maybe he forgot about hurricanes Katrina and others that have ravaged the U.S. I certainly folks in Louisiana and Mississippi haven't forgotten about those storms. Um, the reality is, is that while we haven't seen as many landfalls of major Category 5 and above storms in the U.S., we've seen huge cyclones in the Pacific. We've seen huge typhoons hit places like Japan and the Philippines. We've seen catastrophic storms not just ravage the U.S., but ravage countries around the globe, around the planet, both in the north and the south and worldwide. And that's really the focus of this. This isn't a problem that just affects the United States of America. This is a problem that has worldwide implications. And it's important to, to not sort of you know, change key and tenor here. You can't have a disaster. You can't recognize a disaster like Sandy and then say, well, it's not catastrophic. It was disastrous. And though it was a mild storm, the fact is, is that we rarely ever see category one storms even come up as far as Sandy did and ravage the Northeast United States. In terms of the regulations, again, we really need to understand what's going on. This president has been pushing to regulate carbon dioxide. He hasn't been successful in doing it, even though the EPA has been making the case to do it. But as a consequence of looming regulation, we've seen sea changes in tons of production issues. We've seen a movement to increase the number of green jobs. We've seen countries, uh, not just the U.S., but other countries around the world, Germany, China, and so forth, really making big changes in production. Why? Because they're thinking about regulations that are coming down the pike. They're also planning, not just countries, but states in the U.S. Right now, California has more solar employees, people in the solar industry, than they've got actors. Texas has got more solar employees, folks in the solar industry, then they've got ranchers. In the whole U.S., we've got more people in the solar industry than we've got in coal mining. Why do we have that? Not because of successful regulation, per se, even though the EPA has been trying to push and break ground on regulating carbon dioxide, but we have that because people are planning for regulation that will undoubtedly come. And why is it going to come? Because it's being put on the table and it's coming to deal with this unfolding problem that's not only a U.S. problem, it's a global problem. And we're responding in this country, and other countries are responding Michael, accordingly. Michael, I'm, Folks I'm, in a, California I'm, Michael, I'm afraid we're going to have to end it there. I, I apologize, but we've run out of time. But thank you I both. I don't get a rebuttal. Go ahead, if, 10 seconds or so, okay. if you can. What you said about hurricanes, Michael, is simply not correct. The overall amount of accumulated cyclone energy, that's the global measure of how much hurricane energy there is in all the world's hurricane basins, has declined from 1970 to today. A recent study of the five major hurricane basins, not just the Atlantic Basin, found 
that there has been no long-term change in landfalling hurricanes in those, in those areas, either the strength or the frequency. And finally, I would just point out that once you make the proper adjustment for increases in population, wealth, and the consumer price index, there has been no long-term change in the total amount of hurricane damage or even extreme weather-related damage since 1900. Marlo, we're going to have to leave it there. Michael, thank you both for coming here on The Heat.